there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to sketch this cupcake here. This was also much requested and it's a very quick and easy tutorial. Um, I'm going to sketch it with my Spectrum Aqua Blend pencils. You can use a regular pencil, but I'm using this so that um, it will show up really well for you. I'm starting with kind of a trapezoid shape. Uh, I've got these two slanted lines, flat line across the bottom, which I will then curve out. Apologize for that noise there. It is the weekend, holiday weekend here. Lots of noise in my home. Um, but we'll try to we'll try to work around that. Most of you guys say that it doesn't bother you, so uh, I hope that's the case. Notice these lines are going parallel to the edges, and when we get to the center, they're going up and down. Okay, now we're going to put our cupcake stuff with like a vanilla cupcake or whatever. I'm just like kind of putting just a little scribbly line in there just to signify that. And then I'm going to put my frosting on. And that's going to be in kind of swirly shapes like that. Really fun thing to draw here. And I just did this out of my imagination um, when I sketched that and I'm just going by that to get my, um, to sketch it for you today. And then our little cherry on top, kind of nestle it into the icing there. And I'm not going to sketch the stem on because I'll just paint that on with my paint. Okay, um, the water pump noise is bugging me, so I'm going to pause it and we'll come back after that stops being noisy. <laughs> While the pump was going, I took the chance to grab some paint and put it on my palette where you could see it. So what we have here is some raw sienna, or you can use ultramarine, I mean, you can use yellow ochre or raw sienna, it doesn't matter. Um, I've got some burnt sienna alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, and cerulean blue. So the first thing we're going to do is wet the bottom of the cupcake, and this will liquefy what we sketched with, which is kind of like a cerulean color anyway. And I am just gently going over it with my soft brush. Generally when I use watercolor pencils, if I was doing this all in watercolor pencils, I would use a stiffer brush like a um, Royal Aqualon or Ebony Splendor, something that's just like almost like what you would use for like toll painting for like pushing around like a light um, consistency acrylic paint, but I don't really need to, especially if I haven't used that much. And I also want to give a little pink edge to my my cup there, so I'm just tapping it up. You could sketch that in with a watercolor pencil as well. Now for a shadow, I'm grabbing ultramarine blue, and I am just kind of putting it along the bottom and along the edges a little bit. That's just going to give it more of a rounded feel. And then I am going to grab some cerulean and just dab some of that in there too. Just make sure you get that pigment right up to those edges that you just pushed up and that'll give you that definition that you need. And I like ultramarine and cerulean because they do some neat granulation and it's just going to give an interesting texture onto this. Now to, there's a couple different things we can do for the detail lines there. Um, the easiest thing to do is just to grab your pencil while it's while the paper's still wet. Now these lines are not going to be able to be blended out, so you know choose wisely. I'm just going to throw in a few of those little fluted lines that the cupcakes have with this uh, same blue I sketched with. Okay, just remember to be very cautious of the way your lines go. Remember how I told you when we were drawing? We're going along, we're going with the edges, and as it gets to the middle, it goes straight, then it goes to lean towards the closest edge again. Now, we don't want to do the cupcake, uh, spongy, you know, the cakey part right now because we have, um, we have that wet cupcake liner, and it's going to bleed if we do that, so we're going to skip up to the frosting area, and again, I am wetting this because I want to put a wash of color in. Oh, that's pretty. Gosh, I could have just colored it in with that pencil. Um, and that's another thing I like about these pencils, the Aqua Blends. They're light fast. That's the like the first thing that I really like. The other thing I really like is that this is a super soft brush, and it is liquefying it just fine. I don't feel like I have to dig um, and scrub to get the color out. And that's what I hear as a big complaint from a lot of people is that um, they have to dig and scrub. Now something we can do here, and I showed you this on my leaf tutorial, um, is that I can wet my brush and hold it right to the tip of that pencil and I can get a lot of pigment that way. If I decided, well I want to have a little more pink in there, I don't want it all to be that crimson color, so 
I can use that. And that way I won't get the hard lines. So we used it in the cupcake wrapper purposely to get the hard lines. But if you don't want hard lines, you want to use it like a paint. Maybe you're, you have to pick. You're trying to decide whether you want pencils or you want paints. Um, this is how you can use them like a paint. So you don't have to buy everything at one time because it can be expensive. It's, it can be. It is expensive when you're first getting into a hobby and you're trying to decide what you're going to use most and you don't want to make a costly mistake you know this is a this is a product that can do a couple things so and if you already have watercolor pencils as long as they're decent quality they're going to work the same way so don't feel like you have to go buy these uh they're nice but if you already have some that you like you, you know use those so now i'm just going in with this crimson and i am adding some of the deeper colors this is a wash so it's gonna blur out quite a bit so i'm just adding it kind of where the um the frosting is overlapping Okay, and I'm going to let it flood out, and I'm going to go ahead and paint this cherry while I'm at it. Now, um, since this is red, I can do this. I wouldn't want to do this next to something that was a totally different color. If I had green frosting on there, I would not paint the cherry now because it would just uh, flood and make a mess. Okay, so now what I want to do, because I do want a little bit of a highlight on the cherry, I'm just going to wrap a paper towel around my finger, and I'm just going to blot in the middle. And that's just going to give me a little bit of a highlight there. We will be doing some work with a white gel pen for those really sharp highlights, but I do want it a little bit lighter in the middle because it's going to give it that roundness that I want. And um, we can go ahead and mix up our color for our shadow while that's drying. We'll just mix it on our palette. And we're going to do one of my favorite grays. It's Burnt Sienna, which is a nice reddish brown. And it is ultramarine blue. So I'm going to rinse my brush off real quick and grab some of the ultramarine blue. And we get a nice gray that way. All right, maybe a little bit more blue to cool it down a little bit more. There, I like that. Now, if I wanted that gray a little purple, I could go ahead and grab some crimson, grab some of this color, and I could make it more of a purpley shadow. It just depends on what you want for your shadow. So I think at this point, I'm going to quickly use my heat tool to dry this, and then we'll come back and add some more. Okay, I dried that for about 30 seconds with my heat tool. And I am going to use a wet brush and I'm going to wet the bottom of this paper. Basically what I want to do is um, make a soft, uh, soft shadow. So if I wet around the area where I want the paint to flow, I will end up with a soft edge because I'm not going to put so much paint in that it's going to flow all the way out here. So I'm wetting beyond where the color is going to be. Then I'm going to load my brush up, soaking up all of that nice dark color. And look at that. See how it just kind of feathers out like that because my paper is nice and wet. And some papers it's going to do that more on, like I noticed like a wood pulp paper will flood, will let the paint flood out a little bit more if it's got good sizing on it. And I find the Strathmore greeting cards do have good sizing. I think it's very equivalent to the Strathmore 400 series that's in the brown wrapper. And it's not, it doesn't have those tractor, tr tractor marks. Like I feel like the 300 series Strathmore paper has that, uh, it almost looks like a, a tractor has gone over it. It has those telltale marks. It's kind of, um, kind of funny. Now I want that a little darker so I'm going to grab a little bit more blue without adding any more water to my brush and brown. Mix that up a little bit more intensely and I'm going to put that right up a little bit closer and let that flood into what I already have going there. That's just going to give me a little bit darker shadow and the thing you're going to notice with watercolor is it dries lighter. So I like to get the... I, I'm pretty I'm pretty brave when it comes to the watercolor. I go in with a, with a darker color usually right off the bat. Okay, so we're going to let that dry and let's move up to the cupcake area. Let's liquefy what we have here. Let's soften up our lines. You can make this whatever flavor cupcake you want. I just happen to have a vanilla one here. I rarely, um, I rarely have vanilla cake because I can do an eggless cake. I'm vegetarian, so I don't, I don't eat eggs or dairy. I can do an eggless cake using vinegar and cocoa powder and it leavens just fine. Um, but it's very hard to find to, to get to do a vanilla because vinegar really shows up. You don't taste it in a chocolate cake, but it shows up in a vanilla cake. Um, you could leave it out, but it doesn't hold its cakiness. It just kind of like crumbles which you know doesn't matter it tastes good but it's not that appealing i'm gonna grab a little bit of that color add it into my burnt sienna just to darken it a little bit more so i have it nice and dark under the shadow uh, under the icing so i want a really thick icing and i want it to cast a shadow because it's so thick and uh and creamy Ooh yeah 
Um, while I'm at it, I will grab a little more brown, grab a little bit of that dark, put my stem on my cherry. Um, just bloop. You could go to a smaller brush if, you know, this kind of scares you. But look at that. If you use it up on its tip like that, use a brush straight up and down, you'll get a really good... Um, you can get really good definition. But if you're having a hard time, like you're getting too much water, go ahead and move to that smaller brush because you won't get as much pigment in water. Um, we'll try that. I'm not a small brush painter, <laughs> I must say, but um, I will go ahead and do that. And I should be moving this, but I want you to be able to see my reference photo and everything. So I'm just going in with straight alizarin crimson now and adding that shadow, deepening the color on the edges. A little easier to control with a smaller brush, I will give you that. Because um, sometimes when you go in with a big brush, you end up putting up too much color and you have to go in and remove some, which is kind of wasteful. That's something I learned from Anna Mason's class over at Craftsy. And all, if it's, it should still be, it should be Labor Day when this is posting. Um, last day for their big sale. They have 50% off all classes. Check out the link in the video description. And um, if you purchase anything through that link, it doesn't matter what you buy. It could be a cooking class, it could be a painting class crafting class doesn't matter um it helps support my channel and i do appreciate that all right so now we've got some nice roundness to it i think i want even more of a shadow i'm going to grab a little ultramarine into that crimson makes a nice purple just going to add a little bit of that towards the bottom there not too much because i don't want it to deaden the color i just wanted a little depth there you go okay so we're gonna let that dry and now i'm gonna go in I'm going to start working on the, the frosting in the middle there. I am going to take my crimson. I'm going to add it right to that area that had a little touch of blue. Let's go with some, some cerulean. I think that'll be a little softer. And then let's start adding some shadows here. So I'm going to go in there, make that nice division. And then I'll go in there. Okay, so now we've got our three different divisions of shadow. I am not going to get onto this bottom area or top area right now because I have too much contact with the um, with the wet areas. So I'm just putting in these kind of curving lines, kind of like, you know, if you use a star tip and you were icing something, you'd have that, um, you'd have that, that kind of fluting of the, of the icing. And that's kind of what I'm doing. And I'm, I'm just putting a little bit more into my brush, giving the bottom of the lines a little bit more thickness. You probably do this with one stroke if you had a bigger brush. There we go, a little bit more on this edge here. Beautiful, nice, nice and nice and frosting-y. I'm gonna do the same thing up here. And it's all these little layers that make it look realistic. That's, that's the name of the game there. And the nice thing, we're going to use a gel pen. And the thing I really like, I, it's a little bit, I don't know, a lot of people call it cheating. It is a little bit of cheating, I guess, because we're not reserving the white of the paper. But I'm telling you, using a gel pen is really fun because it's just like at the end, you can put those little, it's like you can put the icing on, literally, we put the icing on the cupcake. We put those little shadows in and it's, it's really fun. And art should be fun, you know, I mean... Well, it doesn't always have to be fun, but I, I, I think most of us are here, you're watching because you want to enjoy this hobby and um, I'm here to help you do that so that is my goal and I feel like I should have some maybe some rougher you'd see the edges of the fluting up here too so I'm gonna get those points there this little fall away into a shadow a little bit and um, I'm just gonna blast the heat gun real quick so I can work down here a little bit this thing's amazing. It's my, um, I wouldn't recommend buying it if you're not a rubber stamper as well, cause you know, it's, you could use a hair dryer just as easily. Um, but if you got one, it's really great. Just a little touch of blue in there to cool it down. And I'm gonna put in some of those, some of the icing there too. Please feel free to turn your work as you're going. I'm just keeping mine in one spot just cause it's, it's easier for you to watch. You guys don't get motion sickness while we're going for something small like this. You're just making little suggestions just of the texture, just with those lines. It's all you really need. Okay, so now let's go with the blue and go in the cupcake wrapper, which is dry. And grabbing that ultramarine blue, 
I think I will grab a little cerulean there too because I've got both colors happening and I'm going to go in and add some more lines that are a little bit darker than our pencil ones. Just the suggestion. We don't need to paint every little detail. Just need to give it the uh, suggestion that we've got that little fluting there on the wrapper. And we've got some shadows happening. Use the, if you're using a small brush and you need a wider stroke, use the edge of it. Works great. Works like a charm. I apologize for so many watercolor tutorials. I know some of you guys are probably like, Lindsay, we want to stamp. Um, I'm still getting caught up after summer. The kids just started school a couple days ago, but they have a long weekend, so, you know, it's this or nothing. And I did have a lot of requests for this, so I know somebody's going to appreciate it. <laughs> okay, so now let me just see if that cherry's dry. That cherry is dry. Now we can start doing some high highlights. And again, we got our trusty gel pen. So what I'm going to do is put this, the, the, most prominent highlight up there on the top of the cherry and do a couple over here. Look how glossy that looks now. Isn't that fun? So let me see if that's the, actually these have dried pretty quick. So I'm just going to go ahead and put some highlights. Hopefully my hand is not right in your way. I've got to turn it. I'm sorry, <laughs> because otherwise I'm going to put my hand right in that wet paint. Um, And if your paper is wet, your paint, your gel pen probably will not work on it, and you'll just need to be patient and uh, let it dry. I'm just to go a little bit up there. And if you find that your highlights are too bright for you, you can do a wash over them when they dry with your with your paint. Not a big deal. And then a few in the cupcake wrapper. I'm just going to do, I'll just do some where they're dry anyway. Once you learn the form, you know how the, the edges taper and you can really, um, you can really sketch anything. And there you have it. Uh, really fun and easy to do and make a wonderful birthday card. And I hope you give it a try. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And I will link to the products that I used as well as a link to the Craftsy sale page um, in the video description. So even if you're watching this after the 50% off everything sale is gone, it'll take you to where all the painting tutorials are on sale anyway. So you might find something that happens to be on sale that you want to buy, um, even if it's six months down the road, which is kind of fun. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, happy crafting.